Okay, it's now time to add our first product to our online store. We're going to go through all the buttons. We're not actually going to add a product at this point. Uh, we're going to do that in section two. So let's go over to the dojo and have a look at where we're starting. So in the last lesson, we left off on the product dashboard. Now what we want to do is we want to go click on the big green button in the right hand corner that says add product. All right. Great. Now this is going to take you over to the Shopify dashboard. Again, you're going to see that black bar show up across the top. This indicates that nothing has been saved. Okay. So when you see that black bar, you know that you're going to have to hit that save button in order to generate the stuff that happens. Okay. Nothing will be saved until you do that. So let's start off with the simple stuff. So we're adding a product. First thing first, Title. We're going to need a title for um, our product. So this is where you would enter in your title. I'm going to just put in sample title because I'm going to need to save this product in order to show you a few other buttons. Um, but I'm not going to go and put in all of the information until we do this, until, until we're building the actual online store. So we have sample title and sample uh, description. Uh, moving down, we have our media. So this would be anything like your images. This would be like your videos, any, any, um, any things that you need to add to your uh, your product. Um, we'll go over this uh, a little bit more in just a second. Then we have pricing. So we have our pricing. Uh, it's gonna say which currency based on the settings that you set up, which currency you're gonna have it have in there. Compare it price. So this is the price that you would normally sell it for. If you change the price, it's gonna actually strike out the compare at price and it's gonna show the price so that you can show a little bit um, of, of a discount happening on your web page. Um, you're going to have the option to charge taxes. Okay. And then you have your cost price. So this is for your internal, so internal processes so that you can keep track of what you paid for the, for, for the product. So you put the cost price in there, as you can see, customers won't see that price. This is just going to be put into the, uh, the system. Now you are able to pull this number through liquid code. If you want to customize your uh, front end, you can do this. You can pull it out for them if you want to. All right, inventory. We've got our SKUs. So if you have your SKUs for tracking stuff, you can do that. Um, and you have your uh, barcodes, your ISBNs, UPC, G10, all of that type of stuff. Um, you can you can track quantity. So as somebody purchases it, it depreciates the uh, the inventory value inside of Shopify. And say you wanted to do pre-sales, so you don't have any inventory um, and you want to sell something ahead of time, you would hit continue selling when out of stock, and then that would make your availability go negative when people purchase it. And that way you can you can um, know how many orders to order because they're a negative value. You have your locations. Now we only have one location set up for this store, uh, but if you had multiple locations, you will be able to put in your inventory values of that product in those multiple uh, locations. Next, you have the option to say this is a physical product. If it is a physical product, it's going to require a weight. And the reason that they're going to they require a weight is because you need to be able to do shipping. So you have the option to put it in kilograms, uh, ounces, pounds, or grams, whatever uh, you decide is the best way to measure your products. My recommendation is try and keep it all the same. So if you're gonna do it in pounds, do it all in pounds. If you do it all in kilograms, do it all in kilograms. Um, the more consistency you have around the weight, obviously there are different products that require different ways to do it. But if you could have a, a, a single weight guideline, that would be the best. Uh, customs information. So where is it being generated from? And a harmonized system. If you have a, a HS code for it, you can put that in there. All right. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out now, this is talking about the SEO side of things. So when I went and put in the title name, so as you can see here, I wrote sample title. What Shopify did was it auto generated what we call a handle. And the handle is basically a unique URL that is uh, unique to your store that identifies that specific product. And we can see that underneath search engine listings. So we have my store, we have products, and then we have slash sample title. Now, if I go and change this to sample title two, and I come down to the bottom, you can see it's updated the SEO. This is only going to happen while this black bar is here. Once you hit save. Once you save this product here, okay, it's going to lock in that handle. That handle is not going to change. So now it says sample title. Now, if I decide I want to change this and I want to change this to sample title new and I hit save, 
even if I've hit save and I come down here, you can see that this handle has stayed the same. Why the reason that they do this is they have to have a unique identifier and they grab the first one that you have in order to set it up in the store. Now you can go and change that unique identifier if you hit the edit button and then you come down into the, the handle and you could change this to new. Um, and Shopify is going to ask you if you want to create a redirect. Now a redirect is going to take uh, the old product um, and when someone goes to that page and goes to the new product. Now uh, I want to caution you here because if you create a redirect and then create another product with the same handle as the old one, the redirect will supersede the old product. So people go into the old product, it'll still get redirected. I will go into navigations and show you where to remove any of the redirects that you have on, but that's just something that I wanted to call out while we were going through here. We've got our page titles and our meta descriptions. So uh, title, this is your SEO for uh, search engines. Um, there's, there's some arguments that uh, this isn't used as much anymore, but it's always a great idea to do it properly and enter in this information because there are crawlers that do pull it up and meta information is used in a lot of other places other than just search. So it's a really good idea to make sure you have great page titles and great meta description. All right. Um, some of you may have noticed that I skipped over the options. So this options here is where you would add what we call variants to uh, your Shopify store. So a variant is something like size, it's something like um, a material, it's something like color. Those types of things are variants to your product. There are different, there are different options for the same product. Now you can have uh, multiple options all being the same price, or you can have multiple options that have different prices. I've created actually a YouTube video that talks about this in a lot more depth. I'm going to link it down below so that you guys can go and check that out if you're wanting a little bit more information around how options work. Um, because there are some limitations when it comes to options inside of Shopify. There is 99 variant limits. So that means that if you have 30, um, if you have 30 sizes and then you have three colors, you're now already at 120 and you are, sorry, you're already at 90, which means you only have nine spaces left. So you can't have 30 colors, 30 sizes, and, and 30 materials, and you're gonna blow over that limit. So in that YouTube video where I talk about um, the 99 variant problems, you can go and see how to how to solve that. I won't go into that in here. So we're gonna add, um, I mean, we can add a couple different things. We can add size, we can add another option in here, we can add in uh, color. And when we go and add all of these options in here, it's gonna generate out our variants, okay? So I am gonna go and give this a couple sizes. So medium, small, and large. As you can see, Shopify, jet, it, as I was saying before, it's content sensitive. So as you add more things in here, you get the more options. These uh, six dots allow you to change the order. So now we have them in the order that we want. Um, and we're gonna go one color, which is black, okay? We're gonna go done and we're gonna go done. Now, Shopify has updated their UI since uh, it originally came out to make this a lot easier so that you can go and change it. So if you go and edit, you can go and edit any of the stuff that you've put in there. Okay, um, you can change the order in which the variants show up. So if you have your size or your color, uh, you can change those around and those will change your drop downs on your page. And then down below, it's now generated out our variants. So now this is where we have a limit of 99. So we have variants here for small, medium, and black. We can go and set our own images for each one of those things. So if you click on here, you can go and set the image that you've uploaded in media. So if you drag your images over top under media, you can set your images. You can set the price. So you can go and set the price. You can set the quantity. You can get set the SKU. You can set the barcode. This is a quick edit. This is only designed for you to be able to quickly edit when you're first creating the product. But if we go and save this, now as you can see, we have the black bar. We need to save those changes so that they get put into the system. And we go into the edit. It's actually going to take us to a sub menu inside of Shopify. And this is the variant management menu. So this allows you to look at a specific variant with a lot more um with, with, a, with, a, with a lot more detail. So you have your variants list, listed on the left, then you have your options here, uh, you have your price, now you have the access to put in like compare at price, you can charge taxes, you can put the cost in there like you did on the other one. And this is per variant, this is not just on the product. You've got your SKU, you've got your barcode, you can continue selling when out of stock, you have your quantities, what you have available. They've given you the option, um, 
to actually adjust your availability of a variant in here. There's a better place to go and do this. We're gonna go over that uh, when we are doing inventory on the next module, but you can, if you just need to go and make a quick change to a specific product, you can go in and do it there. You've got your weights, um, and then you can apply this weight to all if you wanted to make a change and apply it retroactively backwards. Uh, and then you have your custom information if it is different than your heading or your master product. You can then switch through each one of these, and you can go and set up your individual variant stuff there. If we hit back to product, that's gonna take us back to the product and we are actually gonna go right back up to the top now. Um, now that we are done dealing with variants, we're gonna go up to the top and we are gonna have a look at the stuff along the side. So um, first of all, we have our duplicate and let's, let's zoom in here so you guys can see what we've got going on. We have duplicate, so if you have a product that you have created and you just wanna create a couple more, uh, you can hit the duplicate button and that will generate you out a new uh, product. It's gonna ask you to put in a new name because it can't have a hand handle that's the same as an existing handle. You can hit preview. This preview button is going to generate a Shopify preview URL. Now it's important to remember that preview URLs should not be shared, they do expire. So what you want to do is if you want to share something, you have to go um, and hit the share. Now. Uh, because this is a demo store and it's password protected, I can't share any of these products yet because it's, uh, it's password protected. Um, but you go to preferences, we can turn off the password um, and then we'll be able to share that. Um, and basically it's gonna give you a URL which you're gonna then be able to copy and paste into um, into your media or into your messenger or wherever. It's exactly the same as uh, the draft order share button that we had before. We have our uh, forwards and backs. Again, those shortcut values are J and K. We can go through that. Um, and then if we come down to the first box, we have our product status. So we can create draft products, which allow us to build out a product, put it all together on the site, go away, come back, build the thing out. Um, and then when we're ready, then we can put it active and it'll show up on our store. Uh, we also have the option um, to set our sales channels. Now, there is a section in here where I'm gonna go into sales channels a little bit later, and we're gonna, I'm gonna come, come back here and show you where to activate them, but sales channels are things like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you wanna put your products. Maybe you have a, an agreement where you can uh, sell it on your online store, uh, and you can sell it on Facebook, but you're not allowed to sell it on TikTok, but you have other products that are on TikTok. So it allows you to, with some granularity, to change which products show up on which networks. Um, and that's being done under, um, under sales channel. Schedule availability, you can pre-schedule when things are gonna show up. So that if you're doing a launch and stuff like that, you can decide, okay, this is gonna come live at midnight on Friday, and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, um, insights, this is gonna be covered in the marketing part, part of the course where we talk about attribution and what's happened with the product and people who are looking at it. Um, we'll go over that once that has been populated a little bit. All right, now if we come down to product organization. So product organization, this is mostly internal. This is designed so that you can keep track of everything that's going on inside your store, but it also allows for search. So before, remember when I set up the Adidas search, this is where you would be doing that. So um, under product category, you can go and pick a category. So these are pre-designed categories inside of Shopify. Um, if you wanna say you're you know working on, let's see if there's one in here for fashion, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. fashion, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, active wear is what I, what I was going to pick here, uh, apparel and accessories, cool. Um, then we have a product type, we can say it's an accessory, and then the vendor, so we can say who the vendor is, so like, if I wanted to make a vendor as myself, I could go in there, if I want to add a vendor, I can hit the plus sign, and I can add a new vendor, um, and every vendor you add in here will now auto-populate into the, the vendor category on the side. Collections, this is how you add it to a collection. We're gonna go over collections in a little bit, but this is how you go over collections directly from the product. So when you're building something, you're like, yeah, I got a new shoe, I wanna add it to the shoe collection, you can go and add it directly in there. So I can go and put it into kids if I want to. Tags, again, these are tags that are managed for you to be able to search products. Now, with products, tags generally were used in order to um, put them into buckets that you could then pull out on the front end. Shopify has actually uh, evolved this and we are now using meta fields and for, for organization for public viewed stuff. There's a section on this course where I'm gonna go over meta fields and explain how they are all used. 
a lot of legacy stores used to use tags in order to uh, give products special permissions to be able to see things. I have a YouTube video on how to uh, create a private collection using tags. I'll link that down below too so you can see how that's done. Uh, but keep in mind that tags are a way of organizing products. Um, they were used they were used universally through a lot of different things inside of Shopify, but now as Shopify has matured, we are getting our own specific custom fields through the use of meta fields, which allow you to do it. So creating tags, uh, there is positives and negatives to uh, creating tags in a certain way. The biggest negative is they get very hard to manage when you have a lot of them. So if you have hundreds and hundreds of tags, I mean, you don't even need hundreds, you need 20 or 30. In this tag module, it becomes very difficult to manage all of them and make sure that they're all set. And that's where meta fields becomes a much better use case because you can have toggle buttons and it's a better UI. Again, we'll go over that in meta fields. And then finally, templates. So templates is something that we're going to go over in the coding section. Um, templates allows you to display your products in different ways. So say you had a, a landing page for a specific product type and you wanted to arrange the content in a specific way. You have some images side by side, you have some content, you have some videos and that sort of stuff. Um, you are going to be creating an individual template for that product layout. But then you have just a buy page, a regular buy page. Um, and they both use products in order to pull onto the online store. A template allows you to display the same content in different ways. Um, again, templates we're going to go over when we start getting into the online store and the theme side of things. It's a pretty uh, powerful piece of technology that you can go and make uh, Shopify look any way that you like. <laughs> All right, that is a complete overview of the product detail page. Uh, there was two buttons at the bottom that I thought were pretty self-explanatory, but I'll pull them out now. They are the archive product button and the delete product button, um, and as well as the as well as the save button. Um, they're down there. You can go in and hit them and I think you can figure out what they what they can do. So the next thing we're going to drop into is we're going to go over inventory and we're going to talk about what that module is used for inside of Shopify. <laughs> 